I'm Gabrielle, so um, Evolve Beyond is actually a founder of Evolve Beyond, so thank you for coming along tonight. One thing I'm going to talk about today is um, when I kind of mentioned earlier the failure of Agile. So I'm a long time Agile Lean practitioner. I've been training and talking about this stuff for uh, since the late 90s. But <coughs> one thing I've noticed is that we're kind of hell bent on delivery and we aren't so good at discovery, which means that our Agile teams are often going really fast, delivering lots of features, but actually often all we're doing is failing faster, which is better than failing slowly, but not as good as actually delivering products that make a difference. So the reason for this is kind of interesting. So if you look at that kind of scrum flow, right, that nice little iteration, um, and this is our delivery, we're all about deliver something and adapt. To me, this is like the Shakespeare monkey approach. So what we're really doing is saying, if we take enough product backlog items, we start coding them and releasing them, the probability that like Shakespeare monkeys, you will discover their complete works of Shakespeare if they type for long enough in a room, that's the same with our product team. So it's all about if we throw it and enough features get out there, hopefully that will stick and we'll find the right one. That's extremely wasteful. So what it means is that by delivering more features faster, what we're doing is taking a bit longer to get to market often. Even when we do get to market, we can create massive product complexity, something we all hate, right? So the last thing you want is more features. When you buy a remote control, if they had the special offer that you could get two buttons for the price of one, would you buy it? That would be really stupid, right? So what we're all about is actually building the least amount. And instead of this whole deliver and adapting and hoping for the best, we need to loop in the discovery loop. So I'll give you an example of how we kind of fail because user stories is one of the popular mechanisms for writing the agile um, requirements. And here's one we were talking about in class today. So I was teaching this class about how to write a user story. It was a scrum class and I said, okay, let's take one we can all relate to. As a scrum class attendee, I want a coffee so that, so we have the user, we have the goal, and we have the reason. Why do you think people in a scrum class might want a coffee? Stay awake. stay awake, right? So that I stay awake. We then start talking about how would you write acceptance tests for that? And people are like, oh, we want it to be hot, add milk, add sugar, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what do you think, team? Good? Everyone's like, yeah. And I've run this with people who are user story writing experts. They've done this stuff for seven plus years, right? And they're all like, excellent user story. What do you think? Good user story? Yeah, it's great, yeah? No, it's absolutely broken and terrible, and this is why. So they're all about, we need this coffee so that I stay awake. The one thing that we should always ask when we get a requirement, what do you think is the one thing we should ask? Why? What's that? Why? Thank you. Why? Because if I said you could come to one of my classes and we have nice little beds and you can sit there and sleep while I just sit there going scrum, <laughs> would you do it? And everyone's like, oh yeah, sounds great. So then I start saying, well actually why do you want to stay awake? What's the point? To learn. to learn. Oh, oh, hang on. I didn't know that. I thought if I just kept you awake and I have these awesome seats. They're like, I made them today and they have little needles in them. So I give them to my class members and they sit there awake the entire time, right? So without that loop, and so the other side of the loop, which we kind of miss out on, is this discovery loop, right? So what we find is often we go in and we ask the client, what is the objective? What do you want to do? And they will say things which are kind of like coffee. One of our clients, Jamie, where are you? Jamie. Yeah, I remember there was sort of like, you know, his circumstance is kind of interesting. He can tell you about it maybe another time. But um, <laughs> it was all about, you know, a client who basically says the essential, we want a new shopping cart. And we're like, go into, okay, that's what you say you want, like the coffee. Why do you want it? So this is where the key element is the deep dive. How do we figure out who are we building it for? What's really going on? What are the problems we, need, we have going on? You know, the why do we want it? What's really happening? And where are the biggest problems? Once we understand that, we create what we call target outcomes. 
So most of us and what we measure, the things that drives me crazy is everything we're measuring at the moment. Agile teams, um, traditional teams, they're measuring things like throughput, how many story points they get through in an iteration. They're measuring outputs, how many features are we delivering by a certain date, and nothing around those is the right measure, which should be around outcomes. How do we know that we've actually delivered value? So if our outcome is to learn, which we discover by finding out why you all want to be here, then we create the other color piece, which are options, right? Over here, I've completely constrained my team. I've said to them, here's a solution, deliver it, which is a cup of coffee. If I spin that around and say to you, if the objective is to learn, what are some different ways you could learn? Take some immersion. You want immersion, do you? Okay. <laughs> what are some other ways we could learn? Stay engaged, okay. So we've got to find ways to keep the people engaged. And I might put this one down. Someone might say, well, we need to keep them awake. I'm like, okay. But even under awake, it gets interesting. Because someone's given me coffee, but there could be many other ways to stay awake. So if I ask my team, instead of telling them, give me coffee right now, I say, I need ways to stay awake. And the team can come up with pretty cool options. One is, hey, Within half an hour, I can go to Boots. I can get some of those caffeine tablets. They're going to cost about 20p each. We distribute them, we're all good. So we take them, and maybe that's an experiment. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? I find some people don't take the tablets. Others stay up all night. Others are caffeine resistant, and it wasn't enough. So I'm like, you know what? What else have you got, team? And they say, well, we could get some Red Bull. That's kind of, you know, maybe it's a pound or something for a can. It's a bit further to go to get that. We can give it out. And maybe that's a good solution until the weather changes, right? So it's this constant way of saying, give me multiple options and I can choose from them, right? We wanna go for the highest value, but we also wanna test them. So this model, messy though it is, is all about linking the continuum between discovery over here and delivery. So what we do, this is a little model called Mobius, which David alluded to earlier. We've found this has kind of changed the game. I've been working with a lot of organizations and going in and talking about, let's figure out the way that we can create our outcomes and options. Let's deliver something. Let's add in the ability to measure. Has this actually kept people awake? Because none of your requirements or backlog items or anything else are any more than giant guesses. Until you validate them, it doesn't matter. And what's kind of interesting is you start seeing patterns. Traditional companies are kind of stuck in analysis paralysis. I wouldn't say they're doing it particularly well, but they never actually test ideas. The agilists are stuck over here with let's deliver, 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 and they actually haven't thought about where they're going. So our job is to actually link these two and it never stops, right? So you're constantly deliver, delivering little experiments, you're constantly creating new options, and this is how you go around, and we should be outcome driven, not output driven. Done. <laughs>